G'day, it's Bill here from Sidereal Trading. One of the things we do here is project work. We're replaced by a client who's got a vision of something and we work together to make that happen. Mike Sidonia comes from Canberra and started his journey into astrophotography and astronomy in general a while back now. Now, Mike's a big strong guy. He's actually a world record holder in something called a farmer's walk where he walked 51 meters with 160 kilos in each hand. So he's not put off by the challenge. Mike has had his mount and telescope housed in a 2.3 metre manual dome located at Wallaroo, which is north of Canberra for the last eight years. But recently, he got a property in the Tindery Mountains, south of Canberra. Now, a vision started developing in Mike's mind for a real observatory, an automated observatory. Located where it was, it would be the highest permanent observatory in Australia. Higher than Tidbin Villa and higher than Siding Spring. He called it Eagle View. At that point, he called us. Now Mike already had a pretty good idea as to what Eagle View Observatory was going to look like. So we helped him with the dome and some advice on how to set it up and make it run with the mount. While the dome was being manufactured, Mike had a deck constructed. By the time the dome was, had arrived, he was just about ready, and it was road trip time. Braving the weather, three of us from Melbourne hopped into Diego's car, picked up James in Canberra and met up with Mike. Then it was up to Tindery early in the morning for the big build. Eagle View Observatory is spectacular. The house is surrounded by meadows, which probably saved it from a big fire a couple of years back. It's absolutely typical to see clouds down below us in the valley, below us and to the south. The dome itself had to be delivered on a four-wheel drive crane truck because the access to the place can be a bit steep and rough. It was cold up there, which is great for astronomy but less fun for working. The build went as normal, we've done this before, and scope domes are so well built that everything just drops into place. A scope dome can sit on a deck or go direct onto a concrete pad. We prefer the deck because you can jump up and down on the deck and not shake the scope, which sits on a separate concrete plinth. It's also a bit easier for cabling. First thing that goes in, is the base ring, which gets bolted onto the deck. Okay, where's the motor? Next, the rotating ring, which we normally call a slip ring. Then the outer cover ring goes on next. Had a break for lunch. It was uh, enforced by uh, a, a bit of a squall. Here we're back again. Once the ring is all in and tested for connectivity, it's time to put on the superstructure. Things start to move quickly now, but it's heavy work. By this time, it was getting late, and because the dome was now waterproof, we broke for the evening. The house was warm, and Mike had catered for us more than adequately. Seriously, this was a good time. I mean, Mike even sang while we was preparing the evening meal. I'm not kidding, this guy can do everything. We relaxed, popping outside every now and again to see the stars through the holes in a cloud. Up that high and at such a location, the stars are incredible. You can see right away why Mike fell for this place. I was up first the next morning, so I wandered down to the tree line to hear the lyrebirds. It was foggy and I hoped this meant a sunny day. Because the dome superstructure is up, most of the day's work is inside, working with automation and cabling things together. While Diego, James and Gavin continued working on the dome, Mike and I had a chat. How long have you had this place? Uh, yeah, we've, we've had it about 12 months now, Eagle View. Uh, came into our possession uh, back in uh, May 2021. So just on the year now, it's been a fantastic year. Yeah. How does astronomy go with weightlifting? <laughs> um, well, I, as a child I had a fascination with science, astronomy, but I also had a fascination with uh, strength. So like a lot of young kids, I loved watching the cartoons of superheroes and Superman and Batman and they were always very strong and I just loved that and then the Hulk. The Incredible Hulk program came on television in the 1970s and it mesmerised me and I thought, wow, I want to be able to do that one day myself. So I think um, the strength side of thing, that's where that came from. Astronomy was always there because of the science interest. And even as a young, young boy, I, I loved anything to do with space and science. And um, when I got into um, high school and got my first job when I was 14 years old, nine months, and I was earning you know, $27 a week or something like that from Woolworths. One day I thought, oh, 
I'd love to have a little telescope. And it was actually driven by the, the idea that I could put it on a, my desk because we lived in a house on one side of the valley and on the other side of the valley there were hundreds of houses. And I thought, well, a telescope's good for peering in people's windows. <laughs> so I thought, well, let's save up the money and get something from the local toy shop. And then it suddenly dawned on me that, oh, I could use the telescope to point up and look at the things I love, and that's science and astronomy, planets and stars and things like that. So the idea of perming through people's windows sort of took a back seat and I realised, no, I'm going to save up some money and get a really good telescope, what I thought was a good telescope then, and end up buying a nice Tasco four and a quarter inch uh, on an equatorial mount, and it cost $325. What, a refractor? It was a reflector, oh, right. yeah. It was a four and a quarter inch F, F9, F8, F9 ref, um, reflector, hmm. Newtonian. And that just took off from there, and I was hooked. So, now, before you had this place, You've, you've got a manual dome at somewhere else. Yeah, I have a property, uh, I have an observatory, I beg your pardon, on a friend's property, which is just north of, of Canberra. Uh, it's called Taru, and I've had it there for nearly eight years. And it's a serious dome, 2.3 metre diameter, uh, manually operated, so I have to push the dome around myself throughout the night. It doesn't have a motor. But the equipment out at Wallaroo, at Taru Observatory, uh, comprises a astrophysics uh, AP 1600 German Equatorial Mount, and on top of that is a 12 inch f3.8 fast fully corrected astrograph with a 3 inch four element coma corrector, and on top of that is a Takahashi FSQ 106 version 4. My uh, strongman days are uh, about just about 20 years old now, uh, but the residual strength that I still have yes has come in handy for for setting up equipment and removing equipment. I can lift things that probably the average person would struggle with. So that's still handy, but that'll eventually go at some stage. Yeah. But while I've got it, I'll use it. Last time I was here, it actually snowed. We've actually got footage of it snowing. Um, tell us about the aspect. Um, which way is the slope, and how dark are the skies? Yeah, um, well, okay, we're, like, we're currently located up in the Tindery Mountains, and the Tindery Mountains are about 50, 55 kilometres south, southeast of Canberra, on the way to Cooma. Uh, and... The residence here at Eagle View is at about 1,435 metres, and it's actually the highest residence in the mountains of all the residents here in Tindry, although well, there aren't very many. The observatory's been put a bit further up the hill, so the telescope will end up topping out at about 1,450 metres above sea level. And that's what we think is the highest... Uh, yeah, it, I think uh, as a permanent structure in a dome, uh, certainly in a sidereal trading um, scope dome, it'll be the highest scope dome in Australia and almost certainly the highest functioning permanent observatory in Australia. How, how, how dark are the skies? Oh yeah, so the skies up here are really quite spectacular. Uh, when we first took over the property, I didn't um, have my observatory and um, astrophotography wasn't happening up here. I was still doing it north of Canberra at Wallaroo at the Taru Observatory. So I brought up my 12 inch uh, Dobsonium and I was doing quite a bit of um, visual observations throughout winter in 2021 into spring. And the skies were absolutely spectacular. And the thing that I noticed was very high contrast. The air is very, very clean up here. Uh, there's no pollution, uh, both um, you know, particulate pollution or light pollution. And the atmospheric steadiness is very good. So I had fantastic views through my 12-inch Dobsonian of the planets, seeing very, very fine detail. So I knew after that I hadn't bought a dud. That's a very good sight. Awesome. And the, the sorts of objects you can see, the faint uh, features in the sky were, were spectacular. So, so now tell us about the, uh, the, the layout up there and the, the dome itself. Okay, so the, the Eagle View Observatory will comprise a, a three metre scope dome, which is elevated on a 4.6 by 4.6 metre wooden deck. It's elevated about 8.8 .8 of a metre off the ground. And in that will be the 12 inch and the Takahashi on the astrophysics mount doing most of the, all of the astrophotography. And hopefully it'll be all automated and be doing it itself once I've set it all up correctly. I also have a large concrete slab up there that I'll be putting a garden shed on and that'll have an 18 inch f4.1 Dobsonian go-to for doing visual observations because I also like doing visual observations in astronomy. So I love astrophotography but I also like visual observing. So I also have a site shed up there which will be a warm room, control room and the whole, the three things will be what I'll be doing on a regular basis. Why scope dome? Um, I currently have a serious observatory, 2.3 metre diameter dome. 
was a fairly old model. I bought it some years ago when we moved to Canberra, and it's not motorised. And I've been using it manually for some time, uh, so when I have the telescope operating and it's tracking an object across the sky, I have to keep moving the dome to keep the opening in front of the telescope. So as it moves in the arc following whatever object it's imaging, I have to push the dome every 20 or 30 minutes just to keep that opening in front of the telescope. Uh, so when I was going to have the opportunity to build Australia's highest observatory, I thought I've really got to have something better. And of course, the 3M scope dome um, from sidereal trading straight into my head, that's what I've got to have. And I thought, righto, I may as well take the next step and go from manually turning a dome to having the dome follow my telescope so I can leave it alone and go to sleep even and do all sorts of things. And that's why I went with, with the scope dome. By the time we're done chatting, it's lunchtime, and the dome is pretty much done. Because Mark can either put the dome control box at the foot of the pier or across next to the azimuth motor, we've cabled it together, tested it all, but Mike has to finalise the layout. Mike's got some big plans for this observatory. First, the main dome is going to be automated completely, so he'll be able to control it from Canberra. But as well as that, he'll construct the garden shed for the big dob. After that, there are more developments that will evolve over time. For mine, I'm looking forward to coming back to Eagle Farm. Our philosophy at Sidereal Trading is to create lasting partnerships with our clients, and it looks like we'll be continuing this relationship for a long time. Finally, how's it been working with us? So since I, um, I, I contacted um, uh, Sidereal Trading about mid last year and organised the idea of getting a dome off, off um, Sidereal Trading, and every time I've spoken to Diego on the phone, he's been fantastic. Every uh, Facebook Messenger message has always been responded to. Uh, they're really friendly people. They're really easy to deal with. And I've found that um, they get astronomy and they get astrophotography and they get the equipment that go with it. And the thing that really stood out for me was the genuineness. Uh, there's no salesmanship. It's all about oh, um, you know, care for the customer. That's how I felt. They gave the kid what I wanted and were very happy to accommodate any special requirements or um, and having them assist here in the construction process has been fantastic. The setup that's been going on this weekend has been amazing to watch. Like a well-oiled machine, I felt very safe and I was in good hands. And I was able to take lots of photos of it and just help where needed and provide food and beverages to keep everyone going. <laughs> Can I say the food and beverages have been awesome? <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you think so. It was in the planning stages for months. <laughs>